Good morning, Trainiacs. Check this out. Fastest bike to run transition in history. Right there, that was it. So as you're all preparing for your races, you're probably wondering, how do I transition? How do I go from one event to another? Well, right after I go for this run, I'm gonna meet you at home and I am going to give you the seven steps to get you from the end of the swim through to the start of the bike with as little damage as possible to your body and to your race time. Let's do it. Well, all right, Trainiacs, it's not quite our normal set back home, but tried to spruce it up, tried to let in a little bit of natural light, tried to get a plethora of helmets and shoes behind me. Let's talk about transitions. So transitioning from the swim to the bike or the bike to the run has been called the fourth discipline of triathlon. It's right up there with nutrition as far as importance because if you spend a lot of time in transition or if you just simply execute your transition wrong, you're gonna do things like drive up your heart rate unnecessarily, ruining the rest of the race. You're gonna spend more time in transition than you need to, ruining your overall race time. You're going to do unnecessary things and frankly, being better prepared for how to handle transition coming into it is going to allow you to feel more confident. And if you feel more confident, you're probably going to perform better. So you can walk up to the start line feeling confident, get across your race line feeling strong. So what I wanna walk through right now is the entire process of transition one, going from the swim to the bike. And this entire process actually starts in the swim and ends all the way up until about 10 minutes into the bike. So that's what I'm gonna take you through with this seven step process to get through transition one as fast, as efficiently, and as intelligently as possible. Let's start off with the end of the swim. A lot of coaches and triathletes believe that at the end of the swim, what you need to do is kick really hard as you're coming into the end of the swim to wake up your legs because they haven't been kicking very hard to begin with throughout the swim because triathletes don't kick a lot in the water, especially if they're wearing a wetsuit. I could not disagree with this more. Legs are huge muscle groups. They use a ton of oxygen. And from the standpoint of age group triathletes, kicking really hard doesn't really provide us with any sort of propulsion. We don't have a really strong kick, so we might only be giving ourselves anywhere from zero to 3% more propulsion if we're kicking really hard. But if we're kicking really hard, what's gonna happen? Our heart rate's gonna go through the roof. And what we want to minimize throughout an entire triathlon are serious heart rate spikes because what that does is it ends up basically burning some matches. It's one red X on your race plan if you have a serious heart rate spike because that burns a ton of energy. And efficiency is the name of the game. So my belief is that your legs are awake. This idea that they've gone to sleep and don't know how to walk is silly. We go from lying down on the couch for 20 minutes, two hours, four hours to standing up and everything's just fine. So it's not like our legs forget how to kick. If anything, what I would say is in the last one to 200 meters before the end of the swim, actually just focus on calming yourself down. So I would say actually in the last little while of the swim, chill out. The next phase is in the few seconds after you stand up. When you stand up out of the water, you're gonna be going from a horizontal position, which you've been in from anywhere from 10 minutes to two hours, and then all of a sudden, boom, your entire body has to hold up its entire weight. The weight isn't displaced by all of that water providing buoyancy or a wetsuit providing buoyancy or being horizontal. You are gonna have to hold up your entire body weight and run. This is just as important a skill to train yourself in as it is to go from biking to running. So how you do this is by doing deck ups. 
Deck ups are a swim skill that you build into your swim sets in the three months leading up to your race, where all you simply do is at certain points throughout your workout, and on teamtrainiac.com, it's all laid out when our athletes do it, you just build it into your workout where you hop up on the deck, you run for 10 seconds, jump back in. This is going to train your body to go from swimming to vertical to running without having <gasps> another huge heart rate spike because we want to limit that. The third thing that I want you to think about is bike placement and this starts when you're setting up transition. So let's say that this is transition and let's say that over here at the top corner is the transition exit. If you look at the Ironman All-World Athlete bonuses, the incentives for being an Ironman All-World Athlete, most of the time the spots for those All-World Athletes is located right near the exit. Most of the time, the dedicated spot for the pros is right near the exit of transition. Why this is, is you want as much time as possible where you can run without your bike. Now, what you might be saying is that a really good transition is probably going to nullify having to run with your bike and you're either gonna have to do it in transition one or transition two, but you ideally want to have that set up as close to the exit as possible. It's where pros wanna be, it's where the elite age groupers wanna be. It just ends up resulting in less time that you're spending having to do a bunch of things with your bike. And if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. So if you can get into transition earlier in the morning and position your bike closer to that exit, if you do have a choice, that's where you want to do it. Fourth thing, and this is a really big thing, is how to remember where you placed your bike. There are a lot of times that people are running through transition and even if it's 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds having to look for your bike, if you're running past your bike, if you're in the wrong lane for your bike. With this easy system that I'm about to tell you, it's not gonna take you any more time to figure out where your bike is so it's going to make sure that you don't potentially penalize yourself by adding time. So what you wanna do is before the race starts, you wanna create a landmark in transition. So you wanna basically walk transition, either the day before the race or race morning, basically from your swim exit to your bike. And as you are doing that in a controlled fashion where there's no consequences, you can concentrate, Look off to the right, look to the left, look on all of the bike racks, look at what a marker is going to be that lets you know that's where you go. So in my case, thinking back to Half Ironman Atlantic City, there was a tent on the left. So I ran up, knew that there was a certain tent on the left, boom, I turn right. And then what I did was I counted one bike rack, two bike racks, I think it was five bike racks, boom. That's where I knew that my bike was going to be. And as I start getting into the area, I start slowing down to again, get my heart rate under control. Fifth thing is changing. Do you change in transition? No, you do not change going from the swim to the bike. There is one exception, however. Ideally, you've chosen a race that is a wetsuit legal race. This is really good for beginner triathletes because it provides you with buoyancy in the water and a little bit of additional comfort. That makes me feel good about all of you. Quiet on set, Pete. So what you wanna have done is underneath your wetsuit, choose a race kit that is going to allow you to just peel off the wetsuit and go out to the bike. You don't wanna to have to change. Put on anything, take off anything, all of that is lost time. Triathlon kits and clothing is all designed to be worn from the start to the finish of the race. And what I'll actually do is I'll link to a video at the end of this video that says what I recommend you wear that allows you to not have to change in transition. Nobody should change in transition, except if you are in a non-wetsuit race and you're a complete beginner and you don't yet have a swim skin, in that case, it makes more sense to have just your triathlon bottoms and then put your top on in transition because that top in the water, if you don't have a swim skin, if you don't have a wetsuit on over top of it, that's gonna create a huge amount of drag. That's just basically gonna be a water sail that is like just catching all kinds of water, slowing you down in the swim. Don't want that. 
The sixth and next to last thing is your transition setup. What I recommend people do is they have everything that they possibly can set up before the race starts. So this means all of your nutrition is either taped to your bike, is either in a bento box on the bike, any nutrition could be in the back pockets of your kit if you do have a wetsuit that's going on over top of it and have your bike shoes clipped into your bike already. So if that's the case, you've got your nutrition already on the bike, you have your shoes already on the bike, you have your nutrition and anything that you need already in your kit, only thing that's left to do is put on your helmet, put on your sunglasses if you don't have a visor on your helmet, which is totally fine, take your bike and out. That is how you have one of the fastest transitions of the day by not changing and not having to do anything besides helmet on, bike out. Finally, let's say that you have done all of that correctly and then you hop on your bike and you start hammering because you're like, hey, hey, Taryn just told me the six things that I need to do, but no, I don't think that there was a seventh. There is, and you start hammering, that's gonna shoot your heart rate up through the roof and it's gonna be detrimental to the rest of your bike and the rest of your run. You're gonna burn through more energy than you need and you're not gonna be able to make up for that with calories. And guess what? There are no heroes on race day. There are no race day theatrics. If you burn extra energy, it's gonna catch up to you later. So what I want you to do is when you hop on the bike, ease into the power that you want to hold. In Challenge Roth 2019, I spent the entire first hour of the bike building up to my target race power. In Atlantic City 2019, where I think I had one of the top five fastest bikes, I spent the entire first 30 minutes letting people pass me as I built up my power to my target race power. So instead, what you do is build up to your target power, controlling your heart rate, easing into it, not letting that heart rate spike, hold your strong power throughout the end, feel great at the end of the bike, all the way to the end of the bike, then boom, you can get on the run and execute a great run and this is how you get to your start line, feeling confident that you know what's gonna happen throughout that bike and run across that finish line feeling strong. So those are the seven stages of transition one. It's how to get through transition one quickly without a detriment to your body. It's going to allow you to execute that great race. Now, if you wanna see that video on how to select what the right kit is, you can take a look at the video here. And if you are a beginner triathlete who wants help figuring out how to get to your start line feeling confident and across your finish line feeling strong so that you can feel like a badass, and that's what we all really want. We just wanna feel a little bit of excitement because we are triathletes and we're pushing ourselves. That's the best part of this sport. I love that about the sport and we put out videos on YouTube every single week, so hit that subscribe button below if you feel that would help you. Later, Trainiacs.